If you're new to Scrivener, it can sometimes be overwhelming to figure out where to start. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Scrivener in 20 minutes. You'll learn everything you need to know and I'll get you up and running on your next project so you can focus on your writing. What's up guys, this is Michael Aran with Author Level Up, giving you the best tools and strategies for writing faster and reaching readers with your stories. Let's jump right into Scrivener so you can learn the basics. So we're here inside Scrivener and I wanted to give you a crash course practical guide to using Scrivener, meaning I wanna get you up and running on your novel as soon as possible, as soon as you're finished watching this video. So we're gonna keep it brief and we're gonna keep it very practical. So the best way to think about Scrivener is as a digital notebook. So if you were doing things physically before, you would probably have to have a notebook to write your novels in, right? And in that notebook, you'd have probably one section for outlining, one section for research, and then in another section, maybe you would have your, your draft, and then in another section, you would have the next draft of your novel. That, that's basically the gist of it. Um, Scrivener is, is helpful because it allows you to have everything in one digital notebook that's much easier for you to manage and much easier for you to access everything. So if you think about an app like Evernote, which allows you to capture things, like you can capture photos, you can capture web pages, you can capture songs, all that sorts of things. And then you combine that with the functionality of Microsoft Word, which allows you to write and word pro use word processing, then that's what Scrivener is. You never have to leave the e Scrivener's ecosystem unless you absolutely want to. So remember, Scrivener is like a master notebook that holds everything that you need. So I've used a modified template here. Yours may look a little bit different than mine, but this is just strictly for instructional purposes. So we've got our book book section here, we've got a pre-production tab, and then we've also got a front matter section. So Scrivener makes it very easy for you to create documents. Scrivener makes it very easy for you to create documents. So the first thing I wanna do is, let's say I wanna create an outline. You click on the pre-production tab here and you create an outline. So you just name it. Now your outline's gonna look a little different than mine, but we'll call it outline and we'll, let's say, chapter one. And let's say that we want to use location. We'll use the famous goal, motivation, conflict method, and then we'll have a quick summary here at the bottom. That's basically what our outline will look like. So let's say I want to be able to reference my outline later on. So we can click it and drag it into the little bookmark tab here. That will create a bookmark. And if I double click on that, that will bring up a quick reference window that I can drag and have anywhere on the screen while I'm writing my novel later on. Now, there are other ways to do this as well, but this is one way that you can have your novel and be able to reference it without having to click into another window or go into another app. So I think this is very useful. So we'll close this quick reference window and we'll go to the book section here. Now, everything you write in your novel that's going to end up in your finished version of your novel lives in this book tab. So you might notice that you can, if you double click, you can rename it. So you can rename it manuscript or whatever you want to call it. But under this section here, that's where your book lives. So if you don't want it in your final book, don't put it in this section. If it's at like your outline or your, your pre-production stuff, you know, research and things like that, you want to make sure that those are outside of your manuscript folder so that it doesn't end up being formatted into your, your book. So let's say I wanted to create another section. So if I click on this little plus document here, and let's say I want to create a section for research. We'll name it research. Now it's nested under the manuscript tab, which I don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it. We're going to drag it out so it's outside of the research folder. And if you right click, it will allow you to change an icon. So Scrivener offers a number of really good icons. So we'll, we'll choose the Blackboard section here. Now if I want to do any research, I can simply create documents under that section and you can conduct your research and have it all there for you when you need it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and I'm going to create some front matter. So let's say I'm going to create a copyright page. Now your copyright page is going to look different than mine, but mine might say something to the tune of the copyright. And if I want to create the little copyright symbol, you go to edit, text symbols, and my copyright just happens to be under frequently used, but you could just as easily find it by searching for it. So we'll put my name in there, 
we'll do all rights reserved. Some people will put their cover designer, give them credit, give their editor editors credit, and then usually a disclaimer. You know how that looks like, right? So that's a copyright page. Well, next we'll create a title page and we'll go over and name this. And you'll notice I did this out of order, but um, we'll, we'll name it. And then give it a series title. And then put the author's name. Now, because I created this out of order, what I can simply do is click and drag the document up and it will change the order. Now, I mentioned that any documents you don't want in the manuscript folder, don't put, put them in the manuscript folder. The front matter is a unique exception to that. Um, I won't go into this in this video, but just it will help you and, and be immensely helpful to you if you create your front matter outside of your document and then you use the front matter icon. That will tell Scribner that this is front matter and Scribner will treat it um, with some special formatting um, instructions later on when you're ready to compile your book into ebook format. All right, so we're ready to write our novel at this point. We're going to collapse the front matter window and we're going to go into the manuscript section. We're going to create our first chapter. It's that simple. Now, if you have one of those books that has volumes or parts or things like that, Scribner does allow you to change things into folders for easier organization. So rename it and select convert to folder and it will do that for you. And then you can just simply create your chapters inside of the folder. Now, another thing that you'll wanna do is you'll want to make sure if it's not there already, take this little guy up here on the top. If you don't see this, you can use Control or Command R or Control R if you're on the Windows to access your ruler. Take this little guy at the top, drag him to 0.25 inches. The reason we do that is because if there's anything I can teach you in this training, it's to eliminate the tab key from your muscle memory. Don't ever hit the tab key ever again. <laughs> it, it will do more damage to your book in formatting than you can realize, and it will take you hours to fix it. What you wanna do instead is when you drag this here, and let's say I have um, a line here. When you hit enter, it will automatically indent the line for you which is useful because then it, you don't have to worry about all the extra spacing and weird formatting that, that um, the tab key will do. So that's, that's very important. So before we start typing our novel, we've, we've pretty much built the shell of what our novel is going to look like, right? So we've got, we've got basic front matter. We've got the manuscript set up the way we want it. We've got a research section. We've got an outline ready to go. So what I want to do is let's say I want to, I want this basic structure for every novel that I want to create moving forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file and create save as template. And what this is going to do is it'll allow you to, to rename it and select a category. And every time you open up Scrivener, you'll be able to access this template. So when you're ready to write your next novel, you can access this and you don't have to worry about typing out everything again. This is a, an efficiency that Scrivener offers that will save you some time. So I've just simply copied uh, the first chapter from a novel that I, I've written and I'll just paste it in here. So what I want to show you is, is the inspector tab. So this is the column over to the right here. You can access it by clicking this little I here. This is the inspector. So you'll notice there's a couple of sections that are, are useful. So the first is the synopsis section. So this allows you to simply summarize what happens in the chapter. This is useful when we go to the cork board, which I'll show you here in a moment. And then you also have the option to create any notes. So notes are gonna look different for every single writer. A couple of different ways to use these would be to make any notes that you need to change later on, um, anything you need to research or anything that maybe you're not sure about that you wanna go back through later. The benefit of the inspector is that anything you type in the inspector will not show up in your final manuscript. It's simply there for your reference only. Now. We'll skip over a few of these because some of these are going to be a little more complicated that I don't want to go into for this training. But what I do want to show you is the snapshots tab. And this is the little camera icon. Let's say I'm a fair, a fair way through this chapter and it could go one of two different ways. And I'm not quite sure which way it's going to go. Both ways are equally viable, but I'm not sure. So I start down one path and I realize, oh, crap, 
I did not want my heroine to go down this path. I think she should have done that other thing that I wanted to do. Normally in Microsoft Word, you'd be kind of screwed <laughs> unless you set up a different different document that had everything saved. What, what, screen, what snapshots will do is when you hit that crossroads, you can simply hit Command-5 and you'll hear a little shutter sound. This will create a snapshot of this particular document. So for chapter one, at this point in time, it took a digital screenshot basically that you can revert back to. So if you get down that path and you realize you don't want, that's not what you wanted, you can simply go to this tab, double click this and you can roll it back. Or if you ever wanted to compare your snapshots, you could do that as well. What's nice about the snapshots is it saves this document it does not save your entire project. So you don't have to worry about reverting your entire project back. You just, it will just save this particular document at this point in time that you can revert to later. I, I think this is really flexible and it's a tool that you should definitely get in the habit of using because it will save you later on when you get into a path where you realize maybe you went down the wrong path. All right, another thing I wanted to talk about with the inspector is at the bottom of every document in the inspector, you'll see the label and status. So if I click on this label, Scrivener automatically has default labels into colors. And that's helpful for some people, but I think the most common way people use labels is to label a document from the point of view character. So if I go to edit, and let's say I change some of these labels to hero, sidekick, and villain, what I can do then is label each chapter based on who the point of view character is. So some people have other ways to use it, but I think this is the most common way. So we'll go in and we'll select this. This is from the point of view of my heroine. And then for status, you can select which what status the document is in, which some people might find that useful. All right, so we've gone through the inspector. Another thing I want to talk about is a productivity tip here. So let's say I want to have my outline up in one window and my manuscript up in another window. I showed you one way to do it, and that was if you click this little bookmark key here, that will allow you to do that. However, there's an easier way to do it, and that's by using split screen mode. So if you click on this here, this will allow you to have two different windows up at the same time. So let's say I have my outline on the bottom, and then I have my manuscript up on top. This will help you work a lot faster and not have to click between windows. Now, you can also, if you want to change this from horizontal to vertical, if you hold the, the Alt key and then click, that will allow you to change. You can use Scrivener's copy holders feature to create up to four different windows at the same time. So let's say I want another window. I'll hold the Alt key and I'll click and drag the outline up into this top bar here. And let's say I want to do this again up here. This will allow you to have up to four different editor windows open at the same time. Again, not a feature that everyone's gonna use, but I think it's helpful. So we'll get rid of all these here as things are getting a little busy. And other than that, writing your novel in Scrivener is exactly like writing your novel in Microsoft Word. I mean, there's really not much to talk about on this top bar here that you probably haven't already seen. So it's gonna be very familiar to you. What I wanna talk about next is some features that take Scrivener above and beyond. So let's say I finished my first chapter and I wanna search for something. So this bar here, you, you can see it serves as a word count meter. If you click on it, it will serve as a search bar. So using the quick search feature, if I wanted to search for every instance of the word magic, it would populate that right here and you could just simply click and go to it. You could also do a full project search and it would re return any chapters that have that that, that word in it, which is very similar to what Microsoft Word Search looks like today. So that's helpful. Another thing that you're, you're gonna find helpful is at the bottom of any editor window here, you click this little target, you can create a target for that document. So let's say that I want this document to be 2,000 words. There on the bottom, you can see you, you, you're at the 100% mark. Now, if I click on this again, there's some other additional options like um, you know, you can select whether it will pop up and notify you the moment you hit that. You can select an overrun allowance, all those sorts of things that give you some extra flexibility. So let's say my target is 4,000 words. See how the, the bar down there changed? I think that's pretty helpful. Now, another thing that I think is worth going over is the writing history tab. This will basically give you a day-by-day, month-by-month breakdown of how much you've written. 
I think I like that a lot. It's a feature I use every day. And finally, before we conclude this training, I want to talk about what what's next when you're ready to edit your novel. So let's say you've gotten everything written. You're ready to start edits and revising. I recommend that you use Scrivener's revision mode. So the way that that works is if you go to format and then you go to revision mode, and let's say we'll choose our first revision. What this is going to do is it's going to change the text of anything that you type subsequently. So let's say I want to make a change. That change is going to appear in red. So anything I type for this first revision will show up in red. So that visually tells me what is in my rough draft and then what's in my first draft. And then if I want it to go up here again, and then let's say I've got all my first, I've got the first round done, and then I want to go into the second round. See, you can tell rough draft, first draft, and then second draft. I find that very helpful. I think that a lot of people watching this will also find this helpful. And the only thing you have to keep in mind with revision mode is that Scrivener does not offer track changes. So if you delete something, it's not going to keep track of that. But I think it's still a helpful tool to help you visually remember, OK, I added this in the first draft, and I added this in the third draft. Maybe I need to make some changes. All right, so before we conclude here, I want to give you some keyboard shortcuts that will be helpful to you to help you get around a little bit faster. So if you're on a Mac, Command-1 will take you to the editor. Command-2 will take you to corkboard mode, which basically has all of your chapters up. And remember the synopsis we talked about? It shows up here on these little index cards. And that's helpful, and there's a couple of different ways you can look at your corkboard, but we won't go into those for this video. And then if you do Command-3, that will take you to outline mode, which is basically the same information but a little bit more, but it's going to be in a list format. So we can see our synopsis is here. Remember we did our label earlier, so you can tell which point of view we're in, and you can choose the status, and uh, that's, that's helpful as well. So that will take you to outline mode. So remember, Command-1 will get you back to your manuscript. Command-2 will get you back to the corkboard and Command-3 will get you into outline mode. So to review real quick, to bring all of this back together, bring it all full circle, remember that Scrivener is like a big notebook where you can hold everything in it. And you don't have to worry about having multiple windows up, multiple apps. This is really helpful. And you can organize your, your project into different areas. So you've got your front matter, you've got your manuscript, research, pre-production, holds your outline, all of that stuff, and you can format this and customize this however you want to do it. I hope this video gives you some perspective on how to use Scrivener. It's an amazing program that pays its benefits to you over time. So have fun digging into it and don't forget to watch the rest of the videos in my Scrivener Essential series. And if this is your first time watching, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every week I publish videos just like this one with writing advice to help you write better and grow your influence with readers. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.